This is the data set. It was Commodore's solution for low-cost digital data storage. This device was as cheap to buy as it was to operate. It required the cheapest kind of media, also known as Type 1 or Ferro audio tapes. If properly used and maintained, it was a very reliable, although slow, method of storing data. But after 40 years, such a device might require some extra attention. Cleaning heads and replacing belts are all considered to be normal maintenance. And for some users, the alignment of the tape head was considered to be standard operating procedure. Although that's a different story. Speed adjustment of the tape is possible but not something everyone is aware of. But, is this important? Does this even need to be changed? This video shows how to check and calibrate the speed of the dataset using nothing but a screwdriver, a reference tape and some simple new software for the Commodore 64. If you want to go full retro and have written a program you want to share, then cassette tapes could be the media of choice. For tape recordings that are only played back using exactly the same device, the accuracy of the tape speed doesn't really matter. However, when you make a recording with the intention of using it in other devices, better make sure that the recording tape speed matches the cassette tape speed specifications as best as possible. The protocols used to store the data onto the tape are able to handle a certain amount of tape speed related errors. Meaning that if the tape speed of the recording device deviates too much from the speed of the playback device, the program stored onto the tape simply will not load. If for example, the tape was recorded in a device that runs 5% too fast and the playback device runs 5% too slow, then the total speed error would be 10% which could be just enough to cause serious problems with some types of fast loaders. The only Waking up with the wrong music could be an expensive mistake. Use the Philips D7547 instead, and wake up to your favorite music. Thanks to the high-quality tape mechanism, it can play your own hits instead of taking them. Order now and get the Beethoven Music Collection for free. The only way to minimize the speed error problem is by making sure that the recording device runs at the perfect speed which with the proper tools is a relative simple calibration. Although, for those who do not have the proper tools, there are some alternative methods to achieve the same goal. But how do you determine how fast a tape is running? Then again, how hard can it be? It's no secret that the dataset operates at exactly the same speed as any ordinary audio compact cassette player, which is a tape speed of 47.5 mm per second. So one way of measuring the tape speed would be by measuring the used tape over a fixed amount of time. You can't get more basic than that. So, let's do this, what could possibly go wrong? Perhaps, the measurement of used tape isn't such a good idea. A more indirect measurement could be just as effective. Therefore it might be easier to observe the driving mechanism itself. The tape is transported or driven directly by the capstan, a perfectly round metal rod. For each rotation of the capstan, 
the tape is moved exactly the same distance as the circumference of the capstan itself. So if we know the diameter of the capstan and calculate its circumference we know how much tape it transports for each revolution. This means that the tape speed could be determined simply by counting the number of rotations of the capstan for a specified time. Since the capstan is directly connected to the flywheel, we place a marker on the flywheel and count the number of times it passes by. Counting quickly could be a problem, but by using an ordinary calculator or calculator app to act like a counter, this should be covered. Since we only need to press one button for each time we want to increase the counter. So, how hard could that be? It goes without saying that the diameter measurement of the capstan needs to be as accurate as possible in order to get some usable results. Therefore the real challenge will be in taking the measurement of the diameter of the capstan. Unfortunately, a caliper isn't really suited for this task. A micrometer is much more appropriate for the accuracy we require. Although, assuming that the capstan is still in perfect condition, googling this value would have been just as effective. The only thing we need to do now is to count the number of rotations of the flywheel for exactly one minute and divide the result by 60. For an accurate measurement, each rotation of the flywheel needs to be counted. If for some reason you cannot keep up, then this whole exercise is completely useless. We need a reference of some kind. An audio CD could be of help here. If we have exactly the same music on both CD and tape. The tape must come from a reliable source and not some silly homemade recording. We could play back the same song in both machines at the same time and match their speeds. This might take a few tries to get it right, but it could work. This method might get you perfect results, but it is also the perfect way for testing your stress levels. And if we consider the odds of owning exactly the same song on both tape and CD, we might conclude that this isn't a useful method for many people. But using a reference tape isn't such a bad idea. Reference tapes are pretty common in the audio world. Although tape is becoming a thing of the past, brand new high quality reference tapes are still available and at reasonable cost. The idea is simple, at the factory they record a tape with a reference signal on a recorder that has been calibrated to the perfect speed. By playing back the reference tape in our own recorder, we must adjust the speed of the tape until we measure the correct value of the reference signal. Which is easy to do if you have a method of measuring the frequency of the signal from the dataset. For example, by using a frequency counter or an oscilloscope. A frequency counter sounds expensive, but some multimeters have such a function built in. On the other hand, many multimeters don't have such an option. And many retro computer enthusiasts don't even have a multimeter at all. But perhaps the best way to measure the frequency of the reference signal on the tape is by using the Commodore 64 itself. It operates on a very accurate clock crystal and it knows how to count.
The classic way of measuring a frequency is by enabling a counter for a period of exactly one second. During that period all pulses are counted. So if we have counted 3000 pulses, we have measured a frequency of 3000 Hz. This also means that fast fluctuations in the tape speed, and therefore the pulses from the tape, will be averaged out over the duration of the measurement. In other words, wow and flutter will not affect the measurement. In order to count for exactly one second, the CIA timers inside the C64 are used. But to configure the CIA timers correctly we need to know the exact clock frequency the C64 is working with. This is determined by the video signal that the computer generates. Which could be PAL or NTSC. Meaning, that by detecting the type of video signal, we can detect the system clock frequency. And therefore we know exactly how to configure the CIA timer registers. This allows C64 users all over the world to use the same program. And therefore provides an easy way to measure and calibrate the tape speed. With the new program loaded into the Commodore 64, it is just a matter of starting the tape. After a few seconds the counter value can be read. If it is too high, the tape runs too fast. And the speed needs to be adjusted so that the tape runs slower. This may take a few tries, but doesn't take long at all. With the dataset now calibrated to the perfect tape speed, another question comes up. How bad is the tape speed of the average dataset? Because this device didn't deviate very much, doesn't mean that others are the same. The only way to find this out is by testing more datasets. After having tested 15 other datasets, the image of what could be expected in the field begins to form. Although it's a very rough image, it does show that there indeed could be a need for this kind of calibration tool. Mm-hmm.